Hey viewers, today I'm going to show you how to overhaul a vintage square taper bottom bracket. So what is a square taper bottom bracket? It's where the, the spindle that goes through the bottom bracket, it's square and tapered on the ends, and then the cranks are press fit onto the ends of the spindle. Uh, this style of bottom bracket is probably the most common style of bottom bracket you're going to find on vintage bikes, and it's still found on some new bikes today. Now I need to start off by removing the cranks here and this one here has a dust cap. Most of them have, actually have a dust cap. Now some of the dust caps can be removed just by uh, prying them off and then some unscrew. Some of them will have like a slide you can unscrew it. This has like two little pin holes. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it uses like a little pin spanner here. I could potentially maybe use a couple little scribes to kind of unscrew it. But I'm going to use my pin spanner here to go into these little holes and just unscrew this here like this and it comes off just like that and then the uh, cranks are usually kind of pressed on using either a, a nut or a bolt this one here looks like it has a bolt and it's most commonly a uh, 14 millimeter I've seen some with 15 millimeter but most commonly it's a 14 millimeter bolt and so I'll just use like a ratchet wrench here to unscrew this bolt and so the bolt is out. The next I'm going to go ahead and remove the chain from the crank like that and so now I want to pull the uh, crank off the spindle there. I'm going to use a crank puller. And I got this on Amazon. Uh, this is a nice park tool one. But you can actually find them pretty cheap on eBay from like, I mean, under five bucks shipped. And they're pretty standard in size mostly. Uh, there are some a few older cranks, uh, like older uh, strong lights, I think like pre-82 uh, strong light and also TA specialties that have a slightly different uh, little part in here, the screw part in there, so you'll need a special crank puller for those. But for the most part, all the other uh, crank sets use a pretty standard crank puller. So this just threads into the crank like this, and it should thre thread in pretty smoothly. Don't try to force it in there. Um, don't, you know, don't cross thread it. Um, if, it. if you have trouble screwing in, you might need to clean the threads out a little bit. Uh, but generally it should screw in pretty easily and screw it that screw this uh, part in all the way and then this part here just kind of screw it in until it bottoms out there and then I can use a uh, wrench here to tighten this part in and this will tighten in against the spindle and pull the crank off just like that and then I can just go ahead and remove this from the crank like that. And then I'm going to remove the uh, non-drive side crank arm in the exact same way. Remove the dust cap. Remove the bolt. And then use the crank puller to remove the arm. Like that. Now once you have the crank arms off, you can get a better look at the, the bottom bracket and see what kind you have. Now this is traditional bottom bracket here with a lock ring, uh, adjustable cup, a fixed cup on the other side. It has a spindle and bearings in there. And so we can take this all apart, clean it, lube it, maybe replace the bearings, put it all back together, and it'll work great. Now another type that you might find is a cartridge bottom bracket. Still, still uh, square taper uh, ends like this, except this is all one sealed unit and really not meant to be overhauled. It's meant to be replaced. And so if you have this kind here, and you can generally tell if it's a uh, cartridge bottom bracket by the type of tool that it takes. If it takes a spline tool like this, then it's most likely a uh, sealed cartridge bottom bracket like this. And if that's the case, then you just go ahead and find a replacement by the same uh, spindle length and the uh, shell width and there's usually some numbers on here and you can figure out what size that you need to get but we're going to be overhauling a traditional one in this video 
Now, different uh, models of bottom brackets require different tools, and you're just going to have to look at the bottom bracket and try to figure out what kind of tool is going to fit this particular bottom bracket. Now, it's got a lock ring on here, and I'm going to need a hook spanner like this to uh, loosen this lock ring. And on the non-drive side, it's always going to loosen by turning it counterclockwise, normal lefty-loosey, righty-tighty type thing here. And so I'll use this hook spanner here, and I'll use like a little wooden mallet, kind of tap this to loosen this lock ring like that. Now, this uh, adjustable cup here looks like it takes like a little uh, pin spanner like this. And so I'll put these little pins in here and I'm going to turn this uh, counterclockwise to unscrew it. Like that. And then I can pull the spindle out here like this. And then there's a little plastic dust shield in here. I can reach in and pull this out like this. Okay, I'm over here on the drive side and I need to remove the fixed cup. Now, the fixed cups are normally reverse threaded. To remove them, you would turn them clockwise. The exceptions are vintage bikes that are made in Italy and France, which have normal threading and will be removed by turning them counterclockwise. There might be some, you know, some other exceptions as well, but the norm is to turn them clockwise to remove them. Now, depending on the type of uh, little uh, fix cup you have is, is what tool you're going to need. And I have this tool here and this fits on there like this. Now, this, these can be extraordinarily tight and um, I actually have a video out there on how to remove stuck fix cups and I'll include a link to that in the description here. But normally what I'll do is I'll get this tool on here like this and I'll hold it on with one hand and then use a like, wooden mallet and just kind of tap this around and kind of get this loosened and fortunately it's loosening because these can be like just extraordinarily tight and but this is coming off so I'll just unscrew this here like this and a bearing fell out here and so there's that and this one actually has loose bearings in there a lot of times they might have uh, cage bearings in there but this particular bond bracket has loose bearings in there now, so here's all the dirty parts from the bottom bracket. You got the spindle, the cups, the bearings, lock ring, the little dust shield there. And what you need to do is clean these up. Now, you can clean these up using whatever your favorite cleaner is. You can use like a citrus degreaser. You can use hot soapy water and a scrub brush. Uh, or you can use like mineral spirits. Whatever you want to use to go ahead and dissolve the grease and get these parts cleaned up. I'm going to use mineral spirits. Throw the spindle in. I don't need to clean the bearings because I'm going to go ahead and replace these. And so just put the cups in. And then I'll let, let these parts soak and get all cleaned up. So here are the parts after uh, cleaning them in the mineral spirits. And then I also scrubbed them off a little bit of soap and water afterwards. Nice and shiny. And then I also want to clean out the inside of the bottom bracket shell. And I also clean up around the outside as well while I have the cranks off. And so I just have a rag with a little bit of uh, mineral spirits on there and just kind of clean out the threads and clean out all the inside there. And I can also just clean out the outside as well. Just get all this all nice and cleaned up. Okay, I'm ready to start putting this back together. What was inside this bottom bracket were loose bearings like this. But what you're going to find more often than not are caged bearings like this. Now, your best bet for something like this is take them to your local bike shop and have them match it and try to get a whole new set of caged bearings. Or two sets, actually. Uh, if you can't do that, another option is to take the individual ball bearings out of the cage, pop them out, and pop brand new bearings of the exact same size in the cages, and you should be good to go. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and stay with loose bearings on there. Well, that is another option, and I have a video on how to convert from cage bearings to loose bearings, and I'll include that in the uh, description. Um, just a heads up, if you have cage bearings like this, some people get a little confused on how they were supposed to be installed. Once they took them out, they couldn't remember how they went back in. One thing you want to just be aware of is you want to make sure that the bearings are in contact with the bearing surfaces 
on both sides. So in this case, normally you're going to have the cage like this facing inwards towards the spindle there because this way you have the bearings out here in contact with the, the uh, race inside the cup and you have the uh, bearings here in contact with the race on the spindle. If you go the other way, now this way you're going to have the uh, cage in contact with the surface of the inside of the cup there and the bearings aren't going to touch and it's just not going to work. It's not going to fit right. So just be aware of which way those bearings go. Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and fill uh, the inside of the cups here, the race, with grease. And I'm using marine grease here and get a, a, a nice good uh, layer of uh, grease in there because it's going to have to hold the bearings in place like this. Now I took 22 bearings out of the bottom bracket, so there should be 22 bearings to go in, I would guess. Uh, so that would be 11 on each side. And these bearings are quarter inch, the same size that came out of there. Again, you can take, go to your local bike shop and have them match the bearings. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the individual bell bearings and insert them around the race one at a time and I should be able to get a complete circle of uh, bearings going around the race and that should be 11 bearings on each side. And so I have 11 bearings on each side and they form a nice complete circle around uh, the races like that. And uh, so that's a good sign that you have the correct number of bearings in there and that the correct size. If you don't get a complete line going around double check to make sure that you actually have the right number of bearings in there and that they're the correct size. And this grease should hold the bearings in place while I install the cups. Okay, so now I'm ready to start installing the cups here. So I have the, uh, the drive side uh, fixed cup here and I want to put a little bit of grease just around the threads that will help it uh, keep it from getting seized and also help uh, keep like moisture and stuff from infiltrating in through the threads there. And this screws on counterclockwise. Screw it in by hand as far as it'll go. Then I can get the tool on here. And let me just go this way. And then I can use my mallet to Kind of tighten it up here a little bit. I want to try to get it as tight as it was when I pulled it off. Like that. Okay, I'm over here on the non-drive side. I'm going to start this little uh, dust sleeve here. And so I have the spindle here. And with spindles, uh, a lot of times they're going to be symmetrical, so both sides are going to be the same length, and sometimes they're asymmetrical, and one side will be longer. Typically, the longer side is the side you're going to insert in here, and it'll come out the, uh, the drive side. Um, another thing to look at, I've read, and it seems to hold true from what I've seen, is that if there's printing on it, that if you're looking at it from the rear of the bike, that it will be readable, it'll be right side up. Um, and I don't know if this is true in every case, but from what I've seen, it seems to uh, be true. So, but, and I'm going to go ahead and insert this like this. I think this one here is actually symmetrical. And then I've got the uh, adjustable cup here, and it's got the bearings in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of uh, grease here around the threads. Just a, a very thin coating here around the threads. Like this, and I'll go ahead and screw this in, and this will screw in uh, clockwise. And I'll screw this in basically until it hits the bearings and kind of stops. And then I can use the little uh, pin spanner here and kind of make sure that it's actually up against the bearings. It is, and I'll just back it up just a little bit. And I, well, my goal here is that the spindle turns smoothly without play. And so there's that fine line between the two. So what you want to do is kind of get it 
and uh, just adjust it so that it's uh, not binding up or real rough, but that there's no play in there that you can't wiggle it. And so I'm going to get the lock ring on here. Like this. And turn this. There's no play. It's turning uh, smoothly in there. And this can be a little bit of trial and error, uh, uh, tightening it, loosening it, uh, readjusting it, tightening it, and, and uh, doing this just a little bit at a time until you find that fine line where you move smoothly and there is no play. Do this, and that's turning smoothly, and I feel just a touch, just a tiny bit of play in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this off just a little bit, those lock ring. I'll hold the uh, adjustable cup here with the pin spanner. Tighten it just a little bit. I feel it. And it's turning smoothly and it doesn't feel like there's any play in there. So that, looks, that feels good. So I'm going to go ahead and just tighten this lock ring all the way here and make sure that it, the adjustable cup doesn't turn with it. Turns smoothly, no play, good. And so now I'm ready to install the cranks here and I'm gonna install the drive side crank first. But before I install the uh, crank here, I wanna clean off the spindle. I don't wanna have any uh, grease or oil on the spindle at all. Uh, the reason being is that uh, the, sp the cranks are held on by friction. They're pressed on and they're kind of held on by friction. Um, and if you have grease on here, what happens is it actually allows the uh, crank to uh, be tightened on farther and farther than uh, normal uh, without the grease. And you could potentially uh, crack the uh, crank uh, arm like that because it allows it to go on farther than it really needs to. So you don't want to have any grease or oil on the spindle. So clean it all off there. And now when installing the crank here, the drive side here, um, if you notice, this is a square taper. There's four sides and the little mating surface inside the crank arm has four sides. Now due to uh, inconsistencies in machining, all four sides are not going to be exactly equal. So that means that when you install this crank arm, there's a possibility that one or more of the uh, things here will be slightly different and will allow the uh, chain ring to uh, go side to side, a little bit of wobble here. So what you want to do is find which of the four positions has the least amount of side to side wobble um, it could be that they're all good, but on some you'll find that one will be better than the other. So just kind of tap it on there and turn it around and see what it looks like to see if there's side to side wobble. Now this is an oval chain ring, so you'll see a little bit in and out uh, vertically like that. And there is a little bit of wobble there, so I'm going to pull this guy off. And then uh, I'm going to rotate it around 90 degrees. And try it like this. And there's a little bit of wobble there, it looks like. So pop it off. Go around 90 degrees. Try it again. And a little bit of wobble there. And it could be that it just it's because it's not completely tightened down, too. So then I'll try 90 degrees here and just see what this one looks like. Thus far, the first one looks the best. And this one actually looks uh, good here. So I'm gonna go in this fourth position right here. Now I'm ready to install the bolt. I put a little bit of uh, thread locker blue on there and I can start it in by hand here and then just use the sock to kind of screw it in here. And then use my wrench to tighten it in. And this will press the crank arm onto the spindle and kind of just tighten it on there like that. 
and then I can go ahead and put the chain onto the chain ring like that. And then I can go ahead and put this little uh, dust cap on here while I'm here and just kind of screw it on by hand and then use my little uh, pin spanner here to tighten it on all the way like that. Same thing on this side, clean off the spindle here from any grease that was left over. I put the crank arm 180 degrees from the other crank arm like this and I'll insert the bolt which has got a little bit of thread locker on there and just tighten it in and use the socket to go ahead and tighten it in all the way by hand. Then use my wrench to tighten it in and press the arm onto the spindle like that. Then put the little dust cap on here. Just tighten it on by hand to start off with. And then use my pin spanner to tighten it on like that and done now it turns nice and smoothly there's no play in there and so I have a nice clean overhauled bottom bracket still lots of other work to do on the bike but you gotta start somewhere anyway what do you think let me know down in the comments hopefully you found this video useful or interesting if you did please give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to my channel click the subscribe button you see new videos that come out and I'm always coming out with new videos I'm over on Facebook RJ the bike guy go over there like that page I post a ton of stuff over there and I have a web page RJ the bike guy .com. go over there sign up for the page and I have a lot of stuff over there as well anyway thank you very much for watching